Remember, this film is to explain the experience of being a witness or a defendant. So far, we've looked at the witness. So now, let's look at the case of a defendant, that is, someone who has been charged with breaking the law. In this case, Peter had just broken up with his girlfriend and got really mad, so smashed up a bin and set it on fire. Wait, wait. That letter is very important. It's called a court attendance notice. This letter says that you need to go to court. Sometimes deaf people get overwhelmed by official letters and try to pretend they don't exist. But ignoring a letter from the police or court can only get you in worse trouble later on. The important thing about that letter is that it will have the date and address of the court you need to go to. So the first thing you need to do is read your court attendance notice and keep it. The second thing you need to do is get a lawyer. You can ask the Deaf Society to help you with this or you can contact Legal Aid and ask them to provide you with one. Thirdly, organise interpreters. Again, the Deaf Society or Legal Aid will help you with this before you go to court. The good news is you can get Legal Aid. But on the basis of what you've told me, maybe you should plead guilty. I'll tell the magistrate you feel sorry for what you did. You'll probably get a fine, but at least you won't go to jail. And the next thing is you need to make sure you're well dressed. Remember, the magistrate may only have five minutes to decide if you're guilty or not. So making the effort to look good can make a big difference. Once again, make sure you arrive at the court on time. Don't be late. You need to find where to meet your interpreter and then go with them to meet your legal aid lawyer. Then you'll have to wait outside the courtroom until your name is called. When you're called in, the court officer will lead you to your seat. Usually you will sit next to your lawyer. The magistrate will then ask your lawyer if you're saying you're guilty or not. Then they'll ask the police prosecutor to explain what happened. Ms Ross, how is your client pleading to the charge? Guilty, Your Honour. Sergeant, do you have the facts in this matter? Yes, I do, Your Honour. I'll do most of the talking, but answer the magistrate if she asks you a question. Thank you. You'll see that Mr Harriman has a prior conviction for assaulting a police officer. That wasn't my fault! Peter! Ms Ross, can you control your client? Yes, Your Honour. Peter. In court, it can be frustrating listening to people talking about you, asking you lots of questions, and maybe you don't agree with what they are saying about you. It's easy to get angry at things when you think someone has said the wrong thing about you. Court has lots of rules and procedures, and you need to follow them. One rule is that you must not talk unless the magistrate asks you to. Also, showing anger in court can lead the magistrate to think that you can't control your emotions. After the magistrate has listened to the defence lawyer and prosecutor, 
She will make a decision about whether you should receive a punishment and what the punishment should be, or if you don't receive any punishment. Mr Harriman, destroying community facilities is a very serious matter. I understand that you're upset about your girlfriend, but frankly, that's no excuse. I note that this is the second time you've been before a court. I will impose a fine of $500 and require that you enter into a bond to be of good behaviour for 12 months. Once the magistrate has given her decision, you can leave the courtroom. But there are still some things you may have to do at the courthouse.